Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I welcome all of you uh, to His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami uh, daily call session. And uh, in this most auspicious month of Kartik Damodar, which is starting from today, and also a very auspicious day of Sharad Purnima. And uh, Guru Maharaj is continuing uh, on the topic from Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Kanto 1, Chapter 9, Verse 34. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, are we going to continue on the same verse, Guru Maharaj? Or? Yeah, how many verses are left in this chapter? Um, The total Guru Maharaj 49 verse. So we're at 34. Correct. I mean, it's at least 15, 16 more verses. Hmm. Um, we'll begin. I guess we can take a pause from the chapter and uh, move into the features that are the glorification of the personalities who have appeared and disappeared in this month of uh, Karti. And then we'll continue to conclude the chapter 
at the end of card week. Um, and so today is the first day of Kartik, in the month of Damodar. And uh, today is I think, Lakshmi Puja, disappearance day of Harari Gupta. And there's one other, there's three things that I forgot to say about. Krishna Saradiya Rasiyatra. Oh yeah, Krishna Saradiya Rasiyatra. So, um, yeah, we'll speak a little bit about Marari Gupta. Um, I'll just mention Lakshmi Puja briefly and Krishna Saradiya Rasiyatra. Umagyanta Miranda Syangana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Nalitamina Tasmai Shri Gurudeva Maha. Prama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutare Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nipunamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Nivirase Sasunya Vadi Pasyakya Vesatayana Vansha Kalpa Turu Deshyapi Pasin Vipayeva Japatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasa Gaur Vatavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So the Supreme Goddess Lakshmi Devi is worshipped on this particular day, which is the advent of the month of Kartik. And that refers to Lakshmi in the spiritual world. Lakshmi expands herself into many expansions of herself to facilitate various types of material desires for those who worship her in that way. But this particular manifestation of Lakshmi as indicated here is the Supreme Lakshmi or Maha Lakshmi. And she has appeared in the world in different features of herself as Sita Devi in um, Lord Ramachandra's pastimes. Um, she is the uh, um, and of course other manifestations of Lakshmi when she appears with the Supreme Personality of God in his Vaikuntha manifestation such as Narayan or Lord Vishnu. So there is uh, worship and authorized forms of puja as mentioned in the Vedic text on this particular day. Today is also um, Krishna uh, Saradiya, the Rasayatra and Krishna dances the um, Rasa dance. Um, this this appears here and again at the very end of Kartik, there is another ceremony. The chronological con connection between the two is, an, is an unknown to me at this particular time, but there is a connection as far as the type of performance of the Rasa dance, where one, the one that appears at the end of the um, Kartik, the last day, is one that is more secluded, more intimate. There's one where the demigods can actually um, visualize from their higher abodes as Krishna performs this very intimate and most uh, uh, sweet of all pastimes with his intimate associates, the gopis and Sri Vrindavan down on this particular occasion. And usually it's there's one that happens in the springtime, and there's one who happens in the fall. The word saradiya has a particular meaning. I'm not particularly sure of the meaning. If anybody knows the word saradiya, maybe our host Vrindavanath might know the indication of saradiya. Saradiya uh, is Guru Maharaj, maybe uh, winter, like a starting yeah. of winter. So, 
for the starting of winter. Okay. Good. Okay, and then of course, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world and we, uh, many of uh, the eternal associates of the Lord appeared to with him in different forms to assist him in those transcendental pastimes. Wherever the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes, he brings his entourage with him and his entourage in Lord Chaitanya's uh, mission is quite varied. Well, he pulled people from all different uh, realms of Krishna's leelas to bring about his personal leela. Marari Gupta is actually an incarnation of Sri Hanumanji, who appeared in Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Um, there are interesting stories of Mahaprabhu's inter interaction with Marari Gupta. Marari Gupta is a physician. <laughs> it's interesting how Iskand has a tendency to give the name Marari Gupta to everybody who's a doctor in our movement. <laughs> we have, if you have a particular doctor, a, a devotee who's named Marari Gupta, you can know he's a doctor. <laughs> Easy to find doctors. Uh, not always like that, but we there was a trend in Iskand for a long time to name every doctor Marari Gupta. But um, yeah, he was a physician. He was quite elderly in relationship to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He appeared before Mahaprabhu. And um, there are many interesting pastimes. Um, some of the earliest pastimes with Marari um, happened in a very uh, purifying way for Marari, you might say. Marari was not only a physician, but he also was a teacher of, of karma yoga and jnana yoga. And he also had a following based on his teachings. So Mahaprabhu has come to reestablish re or the principle of pure devotional service free from karma and jnana. Although karma and jnana can elevate one to a certain level of spiritual practice, it is not the highest goal. And one who doesn't go any higher will have to fall down back to the material realm. Those karma and jnana are not sustainable. One can use karma and jnana ultimately to reach bhakti, but if bhakti is the actual goal. And karma and jnana can support bhakti, but, karma, but bhakti is independent of karma and jnana. And so you'll find there are many examples in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes where he would um, purify some of his followers who had a tendency towards karma and jnana. And Marari was one such personality. Marari uh, used to walk with a limp. And um, one day when he was walking with his uh, students and speaking, some of the principles of karma of Gyan. Lord Chaitanya was a very little baby at that time. He was about five years old. So he was following behind Marari. And when Marari would speak something, Lord Chaitanya would make fun of what he was speaking by mimicking it in a very, uh, what we say, criticizing way. And just like sometimes when you say something, someone wants to criticize you, they, they imitate your voice in a silly way just to show how silly you are. So he was doing that with Marari, and Marari was getting quite annoyed. <laughs> and he kept turning around to say to say, Nimai, go home. <laughs> and then he became quite upset. Nimai was persistent. And many of Nimai's, Lord Chaitanya's early pastimes, were quite mischievous, but they were always had a spiritual message with them in, in his mischievous, mischievousness. So in this particular time, uh, Marari stopped walking, turned around and said, Nimai, go home and, you know, play. Do not continue to bother me with you. you know, in other words, he was upset. So but Nimai, when he was criticized, 
by Murari. He said, Murari, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And then he turned around and ran away. So that same night when Murari was at his home, his wife had prepared his evening meal and he had sat down to eat. And uh, he was absorbed in his eating of the meal and little Nimai snuck into the house, <laughs> unbeknownst. Came up to little, to, to, to Murari while I was eating and he passed urine right in the rice of Murari. <laughs> and <laughs> so <laughs> Murari exploded. Nimai, what are you doing? And he starts yelling. So Nimai said, your teaching of devotion is like mixing urine with something very pure. <laughs> so then he ran away. In other words, bhakti is pure, and when you mix it with karma and gyan, it's no better than rice with urine. <laughs> so that was the message. So sometimes he would play with uh, Murari in such a way. As Murari became more fixed in devotional service, he gave up all of that, and he became a bhakta. And he used to associate with Lord Chaitanya. And one time, Lord Chaitanya said, hey, Marari, you know, Ram's pastimes are really wonderful. Krishna's pastimes are even more wonderful. So you should give up your worship of Ram and worship Krishna. So Marari, of course, was an incarnation of Hanuman. And so uh, Marari was took that very seriously. And that night he went home and he tried within his heart and mind to focus on Krishna's pastimes as opposed to Ram. But he couldn't do it. And his mind and his heart was torn apart. He was suffering, struggling, trying to follow the instructions of uh, Lord Chaitanya. And he practically had a completely sleepless night and he didn't, he didn't, uh, and he was just in such distress the whole night. The next morning, he again joined Lord Chaitanya, as they would always in the morning with his other associates. This time he was, Murari was alone with Lord Chaitanya. And in a very humble, but in a, in a distressed way, he said to Lord Chaitanya, uh, I tried, but I, I cannot give up my attachment for Raghupati, which refers to Sri, Sri Ram. And Lord Chaitanya smiled and he said, of course not, you are Hanuman. And then he took some Gopi Chandan and he wrote on the forehead of Murari Ramdas. <laughs> he was testing him just to show his, his allegiance to Lord Ram. Lord Chaitanya is not different than Ram. Lord Chaitanya is not different than Krishna. Lord Chaitanya is the avatar. -y. He is the manifestation of all of the avatars in one. And he exhibited that many times. One time he was with Marari and uh, he took the form of uh, Varaha Dev, and uh, Marari had a, a begging bowl. And so in his form of Varaha Dev, he took the begging bowl and put it on his snout as Varaha Dev and exhibited his transcendental form of Sri Varaha Dev. And then he smiled at Marari. And Marari immediately fell flat on the floor and started to offer beautiful prayers to uh, the Raha Dev. So Lord Chaitanya was quite affectionate to Murari. Murari, one time, uh, uh, Murari wanted to uh, cook for Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya couldn't come. But he still wanted to prepare a meal for him anyway. 
So uh, he had prepared this nice manure with varieties of fruit stuff. And in there, there was some very fine, first quality bag muddy rice. And uh, Morale, as he was offering the rice, he kept putting G on the rice. And he kept saying to Lord Chaitanya and his spirit, please eat, eat more, eat more, eat more. And he kept putting G, more G, more G, more G. And so much G. <laughs> the next day, Lord Chaitanya said, Morari, I'm sick. <laughs> Why would you be sick? Well, yesterday you offered me so much you with the rice that I could not digest it. Now I have a digestion problem. So give me some medicine, please. <laughs> so this was their transcendental uh, relationship. Okay. Uh, one time, Morari was. Uh, Feeling very despondent, he was thinking, what is the use of my life? I can't really worship the Lord. I have no devotion. I have no piety. I have nothing. I should just simply end my life. And so he went to one shop and he bought a knife that was used for cutting conch shells. And so he had taken that knife and he was going to use it to end his life. So he put the knife in his drawer and then later on that day he was planning to end his life. Lord Chaitanya is the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living entities. So he immediately understood what Morari was going to do. He came quickly to the house of Morari he said, Marari, why are you trying to cause me distress? <laughs> Give up this idea. And Marari acted like he didn't know what was Lord Chaitanya was saying. He said, what are you speaking about? I don't know what you're speaking. And then Lord Chaitanya went right to the where the knife was kept and said, this is what I'm talking about. Give up this idea. And why do you want to cause me so much distress? You are very dear to me. And so Morari got the message. <laughs> and he uh, gave up the idea of uh, ending his life. Sometimes devotees think like that. Sanatana Goswami also thought his body had become so red, racked with various sores as he was traveling through the forest. And uh, there was no water. So he drank some contaminated water and his body broke out with all these sores. And then he was thinking, my body is so abominable. How can I worship Lord Chaitanya with such an abominable body? I should end this body. And so he had planned to uh, throw himself under the Rathiyatra part, which was being held the next day, the Rathiyatra part. And Lord Chaitanya immediately come up and start chastising Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami, your body belongs to me. What do you think? You, you are a thief. You think you can destroy another person's property? I have plans for your body. So please give up this idea. And so nothing goes from me immediately and understood. And we gave up the idea. But sometimes the great devotees actually think they're, they're so wretched. You know, what is the use of their existence? This is their natural humility. And because of that natural humility, they may. Think of severe reasons to uh, to uh, give up their body, but it's not even recommended in the shastras. Of course, materialistic people who give up their body by suicide become ghosts. Uh, yeah, so the body belongs to the Lord. The body is given to us by through our parents. But the ingredients that make up the body are coming from the Supreme Personality of Vata. So the body actually belongs to the Supreme Lord. The materialists are committing offenses because they use their body for their own personal selfless interest to enjoy or try to enjoy 
separate from the Lord, and therefore they're committing offenses to the Lord at every time. They're using the Lord's property for their own selfish reasons. But the Lord knows my body belongs to Krishna. And therefore, whatever Krishna wants to use my body for, that is my desire also. So the devotee always wants to know how best they can serve the Supreme Lord with body, mind, and words. Like that. So the materialist, those who engage in suicide or willful giving up their body are forced to take bodies that are that do not have physical forms but have subtle forms. In other words, the soul stuck, gets stuck in the subtle body without a gross body, and a ghostly existence is quite miserable. And therefore, because they can't use, uh, they can't enjoy their senses because they have no working senses to enjoy, and they try to inhabit other person's body, and therefore, in today's world, so many people are ghostly haunted. <laughs> Um, people are doing so many ghosts nowadays, and people become easily victim by ghosts if they take intoxication or engage in various types of sinful activities. Their minds become susceptible to the intervention of ghosts. Okay, so um, so Morari Gupta is one of the uh, he's Hanuman himself <clears throat> on the Mahaprakash Leela when Lord Chaitanya took the form of the Supreme Personality Godhead and was accepting worship from all his devotees, which was something he never did. All the devotees became so inspired and wanted to worship the Lord in different ways. <clears throat> so Morari was also there during that Leela. And uh, he offered beautiful prayers to Mahaprabhu, uh, wanting to surrender to Mahaprabhu, completely engage in his service. And <clears throat> Mahaprabhu did something to Marari. He said, Marari, Marari, look, look, what do you see? And Lord Chaitanya took the form of Lord Ramachandra <laughs> just to please Marari. And then he said, Morari, look at yourself. And Morari had become a monkey with a tail. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya transformed Ram Morari into Hanuman right in front of everybody and became Sri Ram in front of everyone else. So that was a special mercy given by Lord Chaitanya to Hanuman to Morari Bhutra during that. Very, very intimate and very special leader where the Lord exhibited his mercy to his devotees in so many different ways, just to please his devotees, which he had never done before as his incarnation as Mahaprabhu. Okay, these are some pastimes. We can also speak a little bit about um, the importance of this month. This month, um, there are many recommended austerities of this month. Um, I will post onto the conference some of the uh, recommended austerities in this particular month. But the main thing is that one should worship the Lord in his feature as Sri Damodar, the baby form of Krishna, who appears in the home of his mother, Soda and Nanda Maharaj, and Sri Vrindavanda. And every day chant that prayer known as the Dhammadar Astakam. All the temples around the world either have ceremonies in the morning, in the evening, and in some temples they have both morning and evening for those places that have large congregations. But the actual ceremony is scheduled for the evening time starting at 7.30 p.m. And if you can't get to the temple for some reason, then uh, get a little picture of Shishi Radha Dhammada. And um, we have a nice picture there by Vrindavan Nath. He's a 
showing in his little icon of this feature there, uh, Mother Yasoda tying up little baby Krishna. If you can get a picture of that, or even we have a little uh, porcelain beady made like that, you can also buy them in the shop. And then sing the prayer, the eight verses. You can read it from the book and um, uh, offer a ghee lamp or a uh, ghee wick, one ghee wick to the deity while you're singing the prayer like that. And do that every day. Don't miss a day. It should be done for the whole month. And do it according to your time. But the best time, the recommended time, is in the evening, about 7.30 p.m. Here in Mayapur, there's a huge ceremony that happens every evening, starting at that time, where hundreds of devotees gather to offer lamps and bhajans go on, uh, singing the Dhammadar prayers along with many other bhajans, continuing all the way up to nine o'clock in the evening when the duties close. <laughs> so devotees around the world make it a point to go to either Vrindavan or Mayapur during this time and take part in the glorious ceremonies of worshiping but if you can't do it, you can still do it in your home. Best if you can call some friends together and do it together as a group. It makes it much more devotional, much more glorifiable, much more happier when you do it as a group. Call some of your friends, family members, and others together and have a little group offering. But for some reason, you're not able to get to the temple. And uh, in, the, in the UK, I know many of you are from the UK, um, in uh, Bhakti Vedanta Manor, they have the ceremony in the morning and in the evening, both times. <laughs> so you can go either time and perform that ceremony. Okay, and then there, in this particular month, there's a whole long list of festivals centered around. Uh, Krishna and his different pastimes, along with many great souls, have appeared and disappeared in this month. As you know, we mentioned today, Sri Murari Gupta, there's Narayan Das Thakur, there is um, uh, Gorky Shore Das Babaji Maharaj, and there are some with Govardhan Puja. There is Srila Prabhupada's disappearance day. There is Diwali. And uh, there are so many wonderful personalities who have appeared and disappeared in this month. This month, um, the devotion that one attains is greater than one can attain at any other time during the year. And it says that it is 16 times more beneficial to perform devotional service during this month, wherever you are. But if you are in Vrindavan or Manipur, the devotional credits go up to unlimited numbers, thousands of times. So yeah, here to Kirti, would you come to the temple today? You can come tonight if you can make it, can we travel? <laughs> We have Sri Devi. Sri Devi is in Mumbai. We have Kirti Kirti who is in Mayapur. Let's see. You know, we have devotees from all around the world here in different places. But wherever you are, try to connect with a, a temple and engage in the ceremony. Or if you can't do that, at least have it in your own home. Okay, and there's recommended stairs, recommended fasts that one should be um, devoting. Some devotees adopt certain uh, standards of fasting on this particular month, like eating only once a day, um, or just eating um, only 
only uh, food free from grains the whole month, no grains. In other words, follows following a codice for the whole month. There's different levels of austerities one can perform. And uh, I'll post a few of the texts which give us a clear delineation of some of the recommended austerities along with some of the benefits one can achieve by worshiping the Lord in his month of Dhammadar. This month is also known as Srimati Radharani's month. And as Krishna's month is uh, Madhushirsha, which is the next month coming. This is uh, Radharani's month. Although we worship Krishna in his baby form this month, it's called, it's also Radharani's month. She is known as Ujani, Ujeshwari, in this particular month, which indicates Srimati Radharani. This is uh, the favorite month of the devotees all around the world. Um, there's always a sadness or a unhappiness that comes when the month ends. <laughs> the devotees don't, once they get into worshiping the Lord in this month, they, they want to go on forever. It's so nice. So this is um, a beautiful and very sweet Krishna's intimate pastimes as a baby. Mm -hmm. Which illustrates the mood of parental affection. Okay, I'll stop there and uh, we can open it up for discussion. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for enlightening us in this beautiful, uh, auspicious day and various related pastimes. Um, uh, just like would like to summarize Guru Maharaj what you mentioned in terms of what we should do at least worship Lord Damodar and chant Damodarashtakam while offering a ghee lamb uh, should do it daily recommended time 7.30pm but can do in morning as well uh, devotees try to visit Holy Dham like Brindavan Mayapur but we can do in home or temple with friends in a group can observe varieties of fast or austerities and uh, more details will be uh, related to this month, what to be done and what not to be done will be shared on conference. Yeah, so. You know, correction, if, uh, if you're at home, you should do it in the evening, not in the morning. Uh, there's certain temples who have such large congregations and that in order to facilitate the congregations, they have it twice. Such as, you know, Chicago does it more in the evening. Um, Dr. Dr. Manor does in many and a few other temples around the world. That's just to facilitate the congregation. So generally, the worship is in the evening. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for correction. And Hare Krishna, dear devotees, also request everyone to please switch on your videos. Um, I can see a few devotees already, but it will be great to have everyone darshan. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, Scarlet Mataji, uh, you raised your hand. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my appearances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you. Uh, she, uh, your holiness. I'm so sorry, I'm so nervous. Uh, you say uh, that we should do with ghee. Do what? And ghee, with ghee, uh, when you do offering with ghee. Well, you offer a ghee lamp or a ghee wick. Ghee lamp, yes. So you make one ghee wick. You make a you take a cotton ball, make it in the shape. I know, I know that, but the ghee is not bhakti ghee. Uh, don't worry about it. Just offer it. <laughs> <laughs> I bought I bought the jar. It was organic ghee. I bought it, but when I learned about this bhakti. Then I thought, no, I can't use this. This is not pure. So can I use it? May I use it? If that's all you have, you can use it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no problem. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Sri Devi Mataji. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you. When are you going to come home, Sri Devi? Wednesday, Guru Maharaj, Wednesday, bye.
mercy and blessings, I hope that I will be allowed to get away and come back to Mayapur. When? My plane ticket is 12. Which day? 12. 12. Okay. Please accept my most humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to this wonderful month of Damodar. Guru Maharaj, your um, narrating the pastimes with Murari Gupta was so sweet. And in that pastime, you were telling about how Murari Gupta was talking about Karma Mishra Bhakti, sometimes Jnana Mishra Bhakti, and Lord Chaitanya was very much, uh, he didn't like that. He didn't like Murari Gupta saying like that. But Murari Gupta is actually Hanuman, and Hanuman is the epitome of pure devotion in Dasya Ras. He's one of the. <laughs> it's one of those questions again. <laughs> how, is, how is it possible he could do that? That's, that's the question. So he was just doing that just for us to understand. Uh, it is just Leela, right? You can take it in different ways. <laughs> yeah. Mukunda also did that. Mukunda was Lord Chaitanya's intimate associate. He did the same thing. Lord Chaitanya really chastised Mukunda. So you might also look at it from the spiritual point of view that in order to illustrate his Leela as teaching mm -hmm. pure emotional service, anytime. Yeah. Kind of mixed devotion came, especially within his entourage, he immediately smashed it. Mm. What he done was very strong, very mm. strong about any anything other than pure devotion and service to Krishna as being right. the, the principle of success in, in spiritual life. Yes, 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 very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Don't blame Murari. Sorry? Don't don't blame Murari. He's, he's, he's performing a video. No, Guru Maharaj. I was just trying to wrap my brain around that. What was all that about? That kind of thing. No impertinence, no impudence, no nothing of this sort. Forgive me if it came across like that. Yeah, just like you, you're a pure devotee, but sometimes you get involved with karma and this is back to two, and I have to use the Lord Chaitanya's stick to correct you. <laughs> you forget who you are and you start patronizing the lower forms of bhakti. <laughs> That's all right, it happens. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your mercy, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Shidavi Mataji. Uh, Namata Mataji, Hare Krishna. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the Mayapur Dham and to the Damodar Mantra. So, uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, I just want to clarify one thing. Uh, there was one devotee who recommended me that, uh, um, uh, actually, sorry, I, I asked this question before to Sri Devi Mataji also, but this uh, thing was mentioned to me uh, again and again. So, I'm clarifying it with you also. Uh, one of the devotee mentioned me that um, you should study Ram character more before studying Krishna, uh, Krishna's character. So uh, I was just a little confused. They, uh, the person said that uh, you should study Ramayana uh, before going to Srimad Bhagavatam. So I, I was just not able to understand this. Uh, is it recommended or is it not so important? Interesting question you posed because if you understand how Bhagavatam is, is stayed out in the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the pastimes of Ram are given two full chapters. 
And so that precedes Lord, Chaitanya, uh, Lord Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Um, but I think what you need to do in order to avoid what that person is saying, and that is that you cannot understand Krishna's pastimes simply by reading or hearing about it. If you study carefully the first and second cantos of Bhagavatam, which gives the principle of Krishna as the supreme power within existence, the supreme force within creation, the cause of all causes, the source of, you know, of all of the universes, the highest principle of spiritual practice. In that beginning, uh, the Lord is seen as the creator and the force behind everything. Therefore, it's recommended that devotees study Bhagavatam systematically, understanding Krishna's supreme position before they enter into the 10th canto which is his sweetness manifestation, Madhurya, where he acts in a subordinate role to his devotees. So therefore, that advice is, is good in essence, but one, one can achieve the same thing by simply studying the Bhagavatam in a systematic way. Ram's pastimes are he is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is he is uh, the supreme person and he is righteous in all of his activities. He follows Dharma completely. Krishna doesn't follow the principles of Dharma. He created he because he's completely above all of that. He's the author of Dharma himself. And therefore, if he wants to lie, <laughs> it's dharma. If he wants to steal butter, it's dharma. If he wants to pass urine on the floor, that's dharma. <laughs> but people who have a poor fund of knowledge or take things very cheaply will jump to the 10th canto in Krishna's pastimes, and therefore try to imitate Krishna, especially in his pastime with his devotees in Madhurya Ras or with the gopis. So in order to avoid the possibility of that entering into one's life, one should systematically study Krishna as a supreme power and force in existence. And then there will be no doubt when they hear about his intimate pastimes that there's no difference between Krishna the creator and Krishna the sweet little baby of his mother. So that's a nice, uh, it's a good suggestion, but it's not necessary. If you want to do that and follow that, I would suggest you go to Canto 9, Chapter 9, and chapter 10, which really, those two chapters completely describe in a very uh, summarized form Lord, uh, Lord Ram's passage. So Maharaj, I'm already uh, go going uh, in, a, in a sequential way. So I'm on the chapter, I've started chapter, uh, sorry, Canto 3 right now. So. It's fine, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you should understand, especially in the first, first and second camp, there was creation and sub-creation. That's the topics in those first two cantos. It's also played out in the third canto, and it's mentioned in, and sprinkled through the other cantos too. But in those first two cantos, we get Krishna as the supreme power within all of existence. He is, he is Bhagavan. He is the creator, maintainer, and destroyer of everything. The wind blows out of fear of me. Uh, 
death takes its toll out of fear of me. So he teaches the, the fear aspect as the almighty force in creation in the very beginning of Bhagavatam as a foundation for helping us understand Krishna and his more intimate leelas with his devotees as we go higher and higher towards the 10th canto and ultimately the 10th canto. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful suggestion. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Scarlett Mataji, you have another question, please? Yes. Go ahead. I have a question to, uh, it's, it has nothing to do with this. It has to do with your books. I try to uh, purchase them, but there is not in uh, Amazon or bookstore here. Where do I get uh, the... Okay. Uh, Good night, Can you connect Starla with uh, Diptesh? Yes, 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 Guru Maharaj. Diptesh. So, Mataji, I will connect you. I will uh, just after this, I will uh, connect you with Prabhu. Yeah, Thank you. We'll do all the work. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, your your question, Vrindavanath, about how to offer the Gila. So. Guru Maharaj, there was a question actually from the Ivana Mataji. What is the best way to offer a ghee lamp? How many times? I heard that there are several ways. So just I posted because I... Well, when we offer a ghee lamp in the artsy, when we're doing it to the deity, we offer four circles to the feet, two circles to the waist, three circles to the top of the head, seven circles to the whole body. So that's how we offer a ghee lamp during the RT. Four, two, three, seven. You can follow that, I and mean, that's nice, but if you want to just offer it, um, I mean, I see people offer it any, uh, in different ways, so. It's not wrong. The idea is the meditation that you adopt during the offering. It's not like you're just twisting your arm in a circle and that's the whole thing. You're offering your love to Krishna. The light represents the love in your heart and you're offering that light of love to Krishna in the form of this gila. That's the meditation. So when you when you're in that mood, then that is the, the appropriate way. Bhakti is like light, and love is also compared to light. So that symbolizes this particular offering. So meditating on offering your love to Krishna in the form of this human. Mata is saying now she got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, so Guru Maharaj, while I receive questions from other devotees, uh, I got this question actually yesterday from one of the devotees when while I was explaining about the Kartik month and also uh, very briefly about Sharad Purnima. Then uh, this devotee asked, uh, he a devotee, so there is no question about like um, very good devotee. So that so he understood that yes, like uh, all the gopis and all these pastimes of Sharad Purnima is very, very pure, auspicious, spiritual, uh, not mundane at all. But his question, I think he also got this question from somebody and he was struggling to answer this. He said that uh, Krishna age while uh, in the this Sharad Purnima Ras dance was eight years, two months, or eight years, two and a half months. And uh, while gopis, when they left, while they heard the flute of Krishna on this day, they ran, leaving their children also. So his question was, how old was gopi actually? 
And the question is what? How old were gopis? Like it, he was, this pastime happened in a very young age. So how were children at that age? When Krishna danced the Rasa dance, he was in his Kishore age. That means he was at least 11. The Rasa dance is when he's Kishore. He's not Baal, he's not Puganda. He's Kishore. I'm sure age is from 11 to 16. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the answers. Yeah, although we celebrate that at the beginning and the end, it doesn't mean that Krishna was a baby at the time. He wasn't. No, he was. He's in his Kishore manifestation. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, I have one. You, Kishore means you. Krishna's ages are not synonymous with our understanding of age. When Krishna was one, he's one and a half. When he's two, he's three. When he is six, he is about nine. So he matures a year and a half for every year. And that's how his calculation goes. That's mentioned by the Acharyas. Each year, each year Krishna passes in his pastimes, he, he ages a year and a half as opposed to a year as we age. But he's God. <laughs> so <laughs> these are all part of the universe. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj is also mentioned that in Kali Yuga, uh, to celebrate this Sharad Purnima festival, uh, I heard this in one lecture that we should try to, if possible, uh, do Kirtan in the night. Uh, that's yeah. very, very... So is this also recommended by Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj? Well, Prabhupada does write that we should do Kirtan three hours in the evening, every evening. <laughs> That's in the Chaitanya Charita Rita. He said in all of our temples around the world, we, should, we must institute this kirtan for three hours every evening. It's in the Chaitanya Charita Rita. Kirtan is always appropriate anytime. <laughs> And on the codices here in Mayapur, I believe they do kirtan through the whole night. And in other places also, devotees stay up all night during the codice and either chant, perform kirtan. Mm Thank you, Guru Maharaj. If you want, I'll give you the reference for that. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Agilila, chapter 3, verse 203. In the purport, Prabhupada makes that point. <clears throat> As Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, I'm in my books. Prabhupada said a lot of things, and some of them appear to be contradictory. But if you want to wipe away all contradiction, everything, everything is found in Prabhupada's books. Whatever's in the books is absolute.
Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's here. Hmm. Congregational chanting at least three hours in the evening. This procedure must be adopted in all centers of the Krishna conscious movement. Yeah. In the morning, we do our morning program. During the day, we study books and perform activities. In the evening, here time. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Jai. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, we are just one minute to the dot time, but maybe any other questions? Beautiful day, beautiful month, very auspicious. Thank you, Guru you have to be somewhat proactive and get involved. No one's going to force you. And you have to motivate yourself, get involved with Dhamma it's, it's very auspicious and very spiritually elevated. Namta Mataji, yes, please. I'm sorry, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I would just like to ask, when are you coming to Mumbai, Guru Maharaj? Coming to Mumbai? Yeah. I Any questions? My, yeah, I sent my representative three days ago. So. Uh, I didn't get you, Guru Maharaj. Three days is there on my behalf. Oh, shoot. <laughs> he makes everyone feel happy. <laughs> I know for sure you are coming in the month of November, Guru Maharaj, but uh, I, I don't know the specific dates when you're coming. Uh, I haven't made my schedule yet, but it'll be around the very beginning of November. <laughs> I will also plan my schedule accordingly, Guru Maharaj. When you are in the town, I should be there. Right now, you can take advantage of three days. You need some association, too. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I met her. She was with me on the uh, Vyasa Puja day. We did Vyasa Puja together at my place, but uh, she's also busy with uh, his father. So I didn't force her so much, uh, but we had a good time together on at one day. Yeah. Someone came up to me today and, and we discussed and they invited me for lunch. And they said, I'd like to invite Sri Devi also to come. I said, well, not here. And he said, okay, when she comes back, then she can come. And she's a very sought after personality. Guru Maharaj, you're making fun of me, Guru Maharaj, and you're testing me. I know that. Please, please, please don't do all these things. I'm not capable of passing any more tests now. This is difficult enough being here. Please forgive me, but no more tests. Everybody I talk to, they say, oh, she may be, yeah, she's so nice. She's such a nice Guru Maharaj, she, when she came to my place, everybody were like, with me, uh, I don't think anybody would have danced, but with her, she, everybody danced. So she is, in fact, glorious. Yeah. Yeah, they forgot about who they were when she David was there. They were dancing like, like bookies, huh? <laughs> 
Yeah, she's enthusiasm personified for Maharaj. <laughs> Uh, Guru Maharaj, there is one question from Prema Kishori Mataji on the chat. Uh, she's asking, uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Maharaj, what is Krishna age in Damodar Lila? What is Krishna age in Damodar Lila? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I think it's three months old. That's what I remember. Uh, there's a nice book, not nice, it's an amazing book. It's called Damodar Janani by His Holiness Shiva Ram Swami Maharaj. And it really, really takes in deep into this era. It's so sweet with many references by the Acharyas in reference to this pastime. And I think. We could find all the answers to everything in that particular book. It's called Damodar Janani. Janani means mother. So the mother of Damodar. So the book is actually entitled in the name of Mother Yasoda. Damodar Janani. Nice. Uh, if you haven't read it, here's the time. It's available, I think, on Amazon, where you can write to devotees in Hungary, the UK also. There is copies available through different sources in the UK. Sri Ram Maharaj is coming to the UK on the 13th of October to uh, Enunciate his new book about uh, what is the name of that? Uh, who knows the name of that book? The Raghunath Das Goswami book on. Oh, it's really deep in Krishna's leaders. Ravani. Can't think of it. Who knows? I'm sure somebody knows that. Right? Yeah, the Vilapa Kusum Manjali. Thank you, Mr. Yalita. Vilapa Kusum Manjali. So he's just put out this amazing book. He's going to be uh, debuting it in the UK on, when he comes on the 13th. There it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can also, if he's there, you can also probably get a copy of. And that's his volume one in the work. Yeah, I think there are other volumes coming also. Okay, so thank you. And um, Take part in this in this uh, Kartik month. There's much much benefit. Don't sleep. I mean sleep, but not much. Don't eat, but eat, but not much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. <laughs> Really, really appreciate for your association and also nice message, nice instructions and something. Yeah. And when you were like giving some message to Srimati, uh, Sridevi Mataji, I was thinking repeat of Murari Gupta and <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu past time. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yes, certainly, good... I wouldn't perform, but <laughs> <laughs> All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to all the devotees. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vrindavanath Prabhu, and all the devotees. Thank you, Vrindavanath Prabhu. Thank you, Vrindavanath Prabhu. Thank you, Vrindavanath Prabhu. Thank you, Vrindavanath Prabhu.
Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Guru. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.